Hey everybody! Welcome to the 2020 Garden Goals Challenge from the Green Organic Gardener Podcast. And so today I'm just going to walk you through days one through eight all in one big file. So um, we're here to help you build your very own organic oasis. And a little bit about us, Mike's really the gardener. I'm Jackie Marie Beyer, the host of the Green Organic Gardener Podcast. For five years now, I just celebrated my fifth anniversary like two days ago on January 29th. Today is February 1st or three days ago. For five years now, I've been interviewing backyard gardeners, market farmers, nutritionists, and sustainable ag experts from around the world, learning the best techniques to grow the most nutritious food in the easiest manner. And now we've brought these secrets to you. Um... What's in it for you in the 2020 Garden Goals Challenge? So eight days. So if you, I like to um, listen to them one day at a time, but then I kind of like to go back and review. So eight days of simple action steps you can take today to successfully build an organic oasis this year that you can be proud of, full of nutrient-dense vegetables if you want them, healthy, earth-friendly plants in your landscape, and even take your garden journey to the market if that's one of your goals. And so the syllabus day one brainstorming where no dream is too big. And especially as it's 2020, you could think about making a list for your whole decade. Day two, making your plan. Day three, creating a smart goal. Day four, doing the research. That's probably the most um, busiest day. Takes the longest. Day five, getting organized after you've done the research, like actually making sure you know where you're going to get everything you need. Day six, Uh, before and after shot, even if it is the middle of winter, um, where you are, at least it is where I am. Day seven, you're going to reflect on everything and see if you forgot anything and, um, you know, just anything maybe you learned that you want to change. And then day eight, visualize yourself in your organic oasis. Are you excited? So day one is brainstorming your garden dreams where you should imagine anything is possible. The first page um, is a great place to make a list of all your garden dreams. Don't leave anything out. And so in the show notes, there should be a link to our garden journal. So Mike and I created a garden journal. We also have a data planner um, and record keeper where you can like write down like, because I think it's really important you think about what are you eating so you can put... um, you know, like, what'd you buy at the grocery store? What's in your compost? What'd you throw out this week? What did you cook? Like, what are your favorite recipes? And even if you don't want to do it every day for a year, like, you can go through, like, maybe once a week and write, what did we eat this week? Or, like, you know, certainly your seasons are going to be different. What are your main dishes that you eat throughout the seasons to kind of get an idea of, like, do you like a lot of salsa or are you eating a lot of sweet potatoes or you know, just what kind of things, you know, and then what are your garden dreams? Don't leave anything out. Like, do you want a pond with a water fountain in the middle, an orchard full of fruit trees, you know, a root cellar to store your produce come winter, a greenhouse to help you extend your season? Um, Are you looking to go to market to get rid of some of your extra produce? Uh, Do you want a fence to keep the deer out? I know Mike's goal is to work on our fencing this year. Have you always wanted a chicken tractor? I got one and the wheel didn't work, so it's never really been used at our house because it's still waiting for a um, replacement wheel. And it is very heavy. I was surprised at how heavy the chicken tractor is to move. Um, do you want to order some heirloom seeds? Baker Creek Seeds just had a big sale on heirloom seeds. And like Robin Kelson's going to do a um, promo for uh, the Good Seed Company because that's where we get a lot of our seeds, and she's very local here. Um, pollinator plants to attract bees and butterflies. You know, those are the big questions I get. Oh, my goodness. So embarrassing. Sorry. Um pollinator like what to do about pests and disease and one of the biggest things you can do to keep your garden healthy is have lots of pollinator plants that are going to attract bees they're going to make your vegetables more prolific um butterflies any kind of pollinators they bring but they're also you know you want to encourage those beneficial insects that are going to get rid of your bugs so maybe that's your goal plant a pollinator border like i just love the pollinator border at the um, brooklyn grange 
Do you want beehives full of honey? You know, we waited for years to get those hives and then we've had um, bees a couple of times and then we need to get a new set of bees and try again. I think the big problem we struggle with is um, neighbors spraying pesticides, but I don't know, my friend Nola, who's just two miles to the woods, they're managing to keep their bees, but they do have big signs around their place, don't spray, but they also live on pavements, and they, it's a very populated, kind of like, it goes right up into the best area by where they are, where we're tucked a little more in the woods. Anyway, deep beds full of healthy, nutritious broccoli, tomatoes, or fresh lettuce, like are you dreaming about growing vegetables, or do you just want an earth-friendly landscape where your puppy can run around, you know, or your toddlers can crawl without worrying? So, the first um, mission of the challenge, day one, is to brainstorm your garden dreams. Nothing is too small. Like, we never thought we'd have a well, and we have a well. We have two wells. So, you know, first six years without water, and then it was like another 13 from 2000 to 2013, I think we dug the well. Then it was like two more years before we tapped it because we had to pay it off and pay for them to plumb it. Um, but now we have the mini farm, and I think this year is just going to be the best. So trust me, someday you will get there. If you're dreaming about a farm and you don't think you're going to get one, um, you know, we can help you figure out how to, you know, I just think helping you write down your goals is the best way to get to your dream. So brainstorm those dreams. If you want them and it's meant to be, I think that you will find you can achieve your dreams. Day two, let's make a plan. Let's start your list and really start to define your strategy. So I always think the first step is to organize and prioritize your goals. So when you're brainstorming, you don't want to be thinking about, you know, is the spelling right or when's this going to happen? Like you just want to put everything down. On day two, you're making your plan. So organize, prioritize your goals. I personally like to start with the calendar and put my goals in chronological order. I'm kind of obsessive that way. Oh. Um, Sorry. Uh, a general guess for now is fine. We're going to get to the details down the line. So which ones can you start now? Which ones do you need to wait until the ground thaws? Or maybe you're seeing this in summer and you need to wait for something to get harvested. I don't know. Which ones do you need supplies for? Which ones do you have to accomplish this year or are going to go for next year? Um, one secret that I've learned about successful gardening is that you should start with your harvest date. And that might seem obvious to you, but... I went from brown thumb to green thumb because I just, you know, I would just think, oh, I have the seed, let's put it in the ground. Doesn't matter if it's November, December, I'd be like, come on, let's plant this. But you really want to know when does it, um, you know, how much daylight do you have and when are you going to harvest it and count backwards. Oh, goodness, sorry. Um, when do you want it to be done? If you're working on a landscape, when do you want to be able to enjoy it? If you're planting your vegetables, when are you going to be harvesting? Do you have your list of seeds you want to plant? So, um, start organizing. Like the other day, I was dreaming about where I'm going to put my kale bed for next year. And I finally figured out where I definitely want that to go because I had a shortage of kale last summer and I never want to have a shortage of kale and Swiss chard again because I'm missing them in my freezer this winter. Day three, SMART goals. The acronym for SMART stands for strategic, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound. For each of your goals, you're going to need to create a SMART goal, or you don't need to, but I recommend it. Today, we're going to start with your most important goal you want to complete for 2020. So maybe your SMART goal is to plant a bed of lettuce every week for the first two months of spring. It's strategic because you want to eat healthy lettuce while it's growing before it gets too hot and bolts in the middle of summer. Um, for sure. It's measurable because you can schedule out your plannings each Saturday morning, perhaps starting in March through the end of April. And I always say, one of these years, I'm going to take the seeds and separate them into little packets because what happens to me is I get out there, I'm like, oh, well, I'm here and the ground's ready and I might as well just throw all these seeds in. Um, but that, so then I've never had succession lettuce work for me. It's attainable because by the end of the March, you should be able to get your lettuce seed started, at least if you're like in a place like where I am. And if you can't, you can always adjust your dates. It's relevant if you like lettuce. It's time bound because it will start in April and end in May. It might seem like a lengthy process, but if you really want to achieve your goals and not just say, I'm going to put a garden in this year, it's much more likely to be successful. 
So another example of a smart goal might be you want to build two new deep beds by spring growing season. It's strategic because deep beds can add convenience, more space for planning, organization in your garden. It's measurable. Maybe you decided you wanted two new beds. It's attainable because you can create beds out of like recycled materials or you can purchase new wood just depending on your situation. It's relevant because deep beds help grow nutritious food. Um, it's time bound like you can give yourself a specific deadline like before June 20th, the first day of summer when you want to have things planted. If you need more help with your SMART goals, don't hesitate to let us know. You're more than welcome to email me at organicgardenerpodcast at gmail.com. I will answer as soon as I possibly can. You can always post in the Organic Gardener Facebook group. You can message me or Mike on Facebook. Um, or you can even DM us on Instagram because I've really been paying attention more there um, these days. Day four, research time. What do you need to accomplish your goal? So... If you figured out you want fencing or whatever, what supplies are you going to need? Do you know where you're going to get them? So now you should know what you need. Now it's finding out where you're going to get them. How much are they going to cost? Do you need to save? Can you find some for free? Maybe you're going to like look for recycled ones. So that's going to take a while before you find the perfect like at the thrift store or at a garage sale or something. Is your goal to plant heirloom tomatoes? Where are you going to get your seeds for those? You know, maybe you're going to go to a seed swap. So you've researched where's their seed swap in my, and you've written it on your calendar. Do you have a catalog? Have you picked out varieties that are acclimated to your climate? Did you actually get your seed packets already? Have you looked at them? What are your harvest dates? Do you know your dates to maturity? So that's like how long it takes to grow. So if you're going to harvest it at the end of August and it takes 90 days, so August back 30 days would be the end of July, 30 days would be the end of June. Can Is it something you can put in June 1st? Do you have to start it indoors in a cup? Um, is your goal to sell microgreens to local restaurants? Like if you made a list of restaurants in your area, did you actually reach out to the chefs, find out what's a good time to talk to them? Did you find out what their needs are? Is there something they would like you to grow, like a special herb or anything? Are you going to install a new automatic water system? Do you know someone who has one that you're going to model it after? Have you looked online? Is there a local sprinkler service that can help you? Or like um, a local like Lowe's or a, a nursery store that's maybe selling the stuff that can help you? Are you wanting to plant sweet potatoes? There is a great video on Johnny Select Seed Site, or maybe you want to bring in some beneficial insects. There's a link to video there. Um, what was I going to say about the restaurants? Oh, I was surprised when I worked at that restaurant last summer that the owner said he wanted stuff delivered. If you were going to bring it to his door, and he said he knew a lot of farmers that keeping a vehicle running was one of their big struggles, but he definitely wanted it delivered fresh on a regular basis. Um... Day five, get organized. What do you need to do first? Um, so for me, that's always the fun part, making a list of things to do. If you haven't noticed, I like lists. If your goal is to build a deep bed, do you know what materials you're going to choose? Did you figure out where you're going to get the soil to fill it? What you're going to put in there? Seeds, starch, transplants, where you're going to get them, and when do they go in the ground? If your goal is to create a water feature for the bees, what's it going to be made out of? Where is it going to go? How are you going to access your water? What are they going to stand on while they're drinking so they don't drown? If your goal is to plant an orchard, have you picked out exactly what fruit trees you want? Do you need fencing? Did you figure out how much? Are you going to need a post hole digger where you're going to get your fence posts? If your goal is to plant an herb garden, do you have your list of herbs you want to get? Do they need full sun or shade? Do you know where they go? Do they stay out a year? Do you need to put them in pots so you can bring them in during the winter? Do you have your list of all the things you'll need to purchase or gather and do for each step of your goal? Make sure you have your idea of how long each project will take. And also, I want to mention you should probably have your time sheet to think like, when am I going to be gone over this summer? You know, how am I going to get all these weeding done? When do I have to take the kids to summer camp? You know, or tennis lessons, or swimming lessons, or to the lake. Like, what commitments have I made? Am I going to a family reunion? Am I going to be a maid of honor? Like, what's what commitments do you have, and when are you not going to be there? Like, you might not want to um, 
put in, I don't know, something that has to be watered really bad in August if you know that you're you know, going to be gone for two weeks to a family reunion or um, a conference or whatever, you know? Are you thinking about, you know, selling a share box, um, trading your first share box for, like, maybe four neighbors, like... Are there specific times that they can meet? Have you made sure that they want to, like, get one every week? Or do you want them to pick it? Like, I don't know, just um, get organized and figure out what do you need to do first. Do you need to, like, meet with a graphic designer and put a sign up at your store? Day six. So if day four was the longest day, day six is the shortest day. It's always good to have a before and after photo to record your progress. So all you have to do today is take a picture, even if it's snowy out. And I look at back at our place in the early 90s, I cannot believe how far we've come. So take a picture now of your before. And get super excited for the after. So that picture there on the left is the mini farm. Um, after Mike had cut the trees down, but before he's picked anything up, you can see all those stumps. There's like firewood there. There's brush that's got to get piled. Like it was forest and now on the right. And then you can see the vegetables the first year. Day seven, reflecting. Go back to your garden journal. See if there's any new goals that you've decided. Maybe since you've been doing your research, you've like changed your mind or you found some new things. Did you leave anything out? Are there other things that you've decided you want to accomplish this year? Did you find some cool stuff out there? Do you have something you want to get accomplished for each month? Is there something you learned when you were doing your research that you think you might also want to take on? So just some time to reflect, maybe, or like I said, maybe you decided, oh, I don't have enough time to do that. Or maybe you decided, well, if I'm going to do that, I might as well do this too. Maybe I should put in that big fence, um, you know, and get some fruit trees besides just putting in a vegetable bed because it'll bring in the pollinators. And here we go. Day eight, visualize. Now I want you to just close your eyes and visualize yourself enjoying your garden this summer. You've done all your hard work. You've mastered your challenges. You're ready to harvest the fruits of your labor. Close your eyes and imagine all of your garden dreams have come true. At least the goals we set out in the last few days. What does that look like? What does it feel like? Can you smell it? Can you taste it? Can you hear it? What do you feel like when you put, pick a fresh flower? Are you drinking coffee or tea and enjoying the flowers? Are you taking pictures of a beautiful butterfly or flower, an herb? Are you eating a fresh garden salad and apple from your fruit tree? Are your grandkids skipping through your earth-friendly environment? Are people raving over your fresh veggies at the farmer's market stand? What does achieving your 2020 garden goals really mean to you? We would love to know, and we definitely want to help you on your journey. And I will certainly encourage you to sign up for the Organic Oasis Masterclass this 2020 with Mike and Patty Armbruster and I, and join us to make 2020 your best garden year ever. Let's get growing.